one of the things that I'm really pleased about tonight is that we're able to gather people together from a, a range of different contexts. So people who work in um, local church faith settings and people who work in um, secular charities. And it's um, with that mind, I'm really pleased that we've got um, Gail from Opening Doors with us. Um, Gail, if you stick yourself off mute. Um, we are um, Gail's, um, Gail leads a project called the Opening Doors. Uh, project uh, based in um, based in Walton and um, Gail. Do you want to explain a little bit for us tonight about what opening doors do? You're still you're still muted, Gail. If you're on a laptop, the bottom. The, uh, That's it. We're there we go. Nailed it. Good job. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it, the, the opening doors project. Um, so it, it actually started um, initially going back in. Um, 2016 um, and it was started because there wasn't very much going on in the community um, and we needed more activities uh, primarily it was for children in the community because there was just nothing going on so we started um, the Open Doors project the name it actually came from um, we were looking at you know back in the 60s when people could like there was a sense of community and everybody could go out leave the doors open because there was that sense of trust and everything so that's where like the vision and that's the aim of where we were looking at going with it so we started initially just with children's activities. We were doing like children's disco because, you know, we all need something, you know, to be looking forward to come home, get dressed up and, you know, just have that little little disco at your party games. And then we uh, approached St. Nathaniel's Church because we were actually situated in Walton. We have a farm, very fortunate, which is just over um, the other side to where we're based. Um, but um, when you look on that sort of like the buildings that they've actually got, you know, to hold events, it's very small, so it's not really a practical building. So we haven't got no community centres or nothing like that. So we approached um, the church, uh, St Nathaniel's, um, to see if we could start doing a youth club um, at the church with the children, and the church were really welcoming. Um, so we started to do the youth club at the church. And then from there, really, um, the project, it just grew. It went into then other provision. We started doing um, play schemes. Um, all the provision that we did, it had food attached, you know, because we wanted um, people to come together as a family. And that's another strand, really, is that it's not just a case of like dropping the kids off and then going home. Um, you know, a lot of the families are marginalised and they're living in poverty. So the opportunities that we provide, they wouldn't be able to do if we didn't provide it. So it's about them creating memories, you know, as a family so that they can look back when they get older. So that's what we did. And then we uh, became a charity. It was the 18th of July, 2019. We got our charity status. And then we were just planning ready for our first year operating as a charity. And then COVID came. Well, COVID came the same time as the interim minister, Fiona Penny, Reverend Fiona Penny. So we uh, had to meet with Fiona. And then basically, like everybody, um, you know, we they were then reactive then to the needs of the community. So what our remit was, which was originally, we, we started off, you know, just to support children. When we became a charity, our aim was to promote positive mental health and build community resilience. And the way that we did that was quite broad. But then in our first year operating as a charity, we had to put all that to one side, you know, our ethos, our vision and everything. And then we were just reacting to the needs of the community. The Phil City Council asked us if we'd um, provide the emergency food which we did do, um, but we were also providing like a befriending service. So we were contacting people once a week, um, just checking in. And we were also going out, you know, and doing little visits to people, doing referrals as well to care line and stuff like that. And then whilst we were in the lockdown, we stumbled on quite a few people that had been isolating prior to COVID um, that were kind of, um, they'd slipped through the net, so to speak. So when we came out of lockdown, um, we then thought it was you know, right then to sort of expand you know, our original aim. And then we started to do um, activities each day, and that was for people. So when the children were in school, we were doing activities you know, for the elderly, ranging from adults arts and crafts with a two-course meal, um, crocheting, line dancing, community, oh, there was all kinds. So um, you know, if they had a better social life than the younger ones then, like the elderly. But then um, along came the cost of living. Um, so when, when, when the cost of living hit, I had a meeting with Fiona um, and me and Fiona sat down and spoke about ways, you know, that we could assist the community. But because we people were attending every day, like like the guy was saying before, one of the first things you, you, you always do really is do a survey because it's not what we want, it's what people want. But also as well, 
what determines which way you go and it's the your funds and stipulations so around that time all the funds and shifted as well to cost of living but me and Fiona sat down and you know had a chat once we got like the surveys and things done and um we continued to do the activities because that's what people wanted us to do um, and then we did a community lunch that was the thing that we did in addition so we put like an extra day where we were doing a community lunch but people um this is our first week back because it's pretty much full on it's days and it's evenings sometimes it's weekends as well so um january the volunteers do need to re-engage with the families you know just to refuel and then come back so tomorrow's our first day back and what we do we ask all the people they devise their own menus you know and then it's all homemade you know each week so um it's built a sense of community um it's brought people together the cohesion within the church is absolutely unbelievable when you walk in you can feel it you can feel the love and what it's done it's reduced because when the cost of living when COVID come everyone was living in fear their anxieties went through the roof and for people who haven't got a family network you know and their aspirations were on the floor anyway and what's being built within the church it's actually you know conquered conquered all that and then the cost of living come the anxieties were creeping back in because you've got people who've got all different circumstances different walks of life who were worrying about how they're going to pay for the heating do you know if they're buying the food i mean quite a few of the people only get the state pension if you look at the the cost of the utilities i would shut up that was the main concern that they're not going to be able to eat so through coming to st nathaniel's each day and attending their activities you know they've, they've been able to do that so you can see that you've reduced the anxieties you've reduced the fear do you know and everyone's looking out for each other so it's yeah. been an absolutely beautiful journey and it's worked really well with the church and we're very, very thankful, you know, for the church because it wouldn't have been possible. Also. Yeah. Nice, brilliant. Thanks, thanks, Gail. Okay. When, when when we chatted a couple of weeks ago, one of the things I was really struck by is um, I know you said that you know everyone starts with a survey, whatever, but but uh, honestly, not everybody does start with a survey. What's them? Um, how have you uh, how have you made sure that you've heard the voice of the people that you're working with in the things that you're doing? You talked about you know people designing their own menus, all that. All that yeah. kind of stuff. What, what are the, some of the different kind of tips and tricks that you've learned along the way for making sure you're hearing local people's voices? Yeah. Well, what we do is we have a, a newsletter which goes out each month. Um, 2,500 newsletters go out. So on that newsletter, when we're doing our consultations, so our next consultation's due in March. So when we're doing our consultations, we put them on there so that people can come along to the consultation days. Consultation days, we always have one of a day and one of an evening so that anyone who's working, they've got the opportunity so they're not being excluded. But the people who are attending their activities, we'll do it with the people who are actually attending their activities. We give them paper-based copies, and then we have like a little box that you just put them in. So it's totally confidential. So they're not passing them back to you, you know. Um, and yeah, on Facebook, we do it on Facebook. Yeah, we've got um, the Facebook uh, page, so it goes out on there. We pop a link. So on Facebook, because people are obviously on Facebook, we have the surveys that we do electronically. So we just pop a link on and then they just complete it. Um, and then that's how we determine, you know, what we're gonna do going forward, yeah. Okay, and can you can you give an example of some of the questions that you ask on those surveys? Yeah, well, uh, for the cost of living, it was questions like, what's your, what's your main worry? What's, what's your main worry with the cost of living? And then we'd give like a list and then at the bottom, bottom put other. So, you know, it'd be things like, you know, your main worry is how you're gonna be able to pay, afford your food. You know, for your utilities, and they can take you know as many as many as they want. Not going to be able to do as much as a family. You know, not going. And these are the kinds of questions that we add on there. But then there's always a box as well, so that they can put another option if it's none of the the options above. And then the other questions that we put on there is what what they would like us to do, how we can reduce those worries. And then again, we put a list of the activities, and then there's a box for other. One of the new activities which has came out which we're going to be doing when um, it starts. So it all starts back tomorrow, but obviously um, it's going to be next Tuesday, the first Tuesday. It's going to be a men's group. I've actually got a men's worker. Um, so that's what came out of the application. I spoke to Fiona about that and Fiona encouraged it. So um, that starts next week. And what we're hoping there is because they've got a gardening club in the church. So we're hoping that because we've now got a male worker who's um, very, very passionate, you know what I mean? Um, we're hoping that when he... Is working at the men's club you can then you know start to build some people through to the garden club as well it's just bringing people together the social glue you know yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's class. Were you were you surprised when you asked the cost of living questions? Were you surprised by any of the answers that you got as to things that people were worried about, or was it was it pretty much what you expected it to be? Yeah, I think it's pretty much what I expected it be, to be, only because you know we've been delivering. Like I said, it is pretty much full on, and literally we've been running at capacity now since you know COVID. We haven't took our foot off the pedal, so um, I, I wasn't shocked, you know, at the answers. It's sad. It's very, very sad, but I wouldn't say that I was shocked. Um, yeah. And it, I just feel happy, really, that um, what their anxieties are and the services that we're providing were able to, you know, alleviate their anxieties. I think it made me worry if they were uh, ticking boxes or putting down any of the suggestions and we wasn't able to fulfil it or sign post so it could be fulfilled. You know, the other bit is your volunteers are in the community, so you live in it yourselves. Yeah. yeah, all of all our volunteers all come from the community. Um, because we have like a, um, a group of like 15 volunteers, you know, that come in and out at different times. And we also have a team of sessional workers as well. So they actually come from the community, you know, so it's very, very, very tight knit. Um, yeah. Nice. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gail. If, um, if anyone's got any questions they'd like um, us to ask Gail at the end of this um, section, then make sure you stick it in the, the chat and we'll, um, we'll come back to it but thank you so much um thank you so much for sharing gail